Hey, so it was really good today, man. I appreciate everybody that tuned in to all the Cabernet Conversations, to the Two Brothers Podcast, to them Jackson boys. And this episode, I'm going to explain why I'm flabbergasted. And uh, I appreciate if you subscribe to the channel and thank everybody who done donated to the podcast through Cash App. But uh, with no further ado, let's get to it. Hey, so my boy Troy, he suggested that I read a book. And uh, the book is called The Surrender Experiment. It's written by Michael A. Singer, the same author who wrote The Untethered Soul. Like this book, when I was listening to this book, it was talking about how, you know what I'm saying, things in your mind be speaking to you. Like, are y'all ever just chilling and your mind tell you, I need to get up or... I'm broke or I'm not feeling good, but it's not you saying it. It's just your mind talking to you. And like when, when your life is loud and you're doing multiple things, your mind is just running and rambling and going all over the place. So this book is talking about how meditation calmed that down. And I was very intrigued by the book, like meditation it's real healthy. It calms a lot of things down. You can like calm down the clouded mind calm down uh, your mind talking to you because if your mind is overruling your thoughts and the things that you're trying to achieve you're never going to achieve them because you're going to be just running around in circles because your mind telling you otherwise you know you might know that you're great but your mind telling you you ain't shit and uh if anybody else have those problems like uh talk to me in the comment section about it because I'm about to start uploading books to the channel, audio books for y'all to listen to. And I'm going to start off with this book. But as I was listening to this audio book today, because I haven't purchased a physical copy yet. But as I was listening to this audio book, it was a guy who walked up to me and he was telling me about like what he plans on doing with his life. And he was speaking about himself. In a way that made me feel like two people was talking. And I was like, do you understand that it's two people talking right now? But I shouldn't have hit him with that at that time that I was reading that book because, like, your ego could be a different individual than who you are. Your ego could be telling you that you a superhero, you a real nigga, you rich, you this, you that. But in our reality, you don't feel that way at the moment. That's how the ego plays tricks on you. Like the Ghetto Boy famous song, My Mind Playing Tricks on Me. Your mind and our reality may not be who you are. But go check the book out, though, man. The book is a good book, and I suggest anybody go purchase it. It's titled The Surrender Experiment. But after you watch this podcast, it's going to be the first. It's going to be right after this podcast. It's going to be the first book from Trevor's Library. That's what I'm going to name. You know what I mean? That playlist, Trevor's Library, audio books from Trevor's Library. So, like, I know y'all seen, like, What's going on in L.A.? Like gang violence, like when Nipsey Hussle uh, passed or whatever, it looked like it was a truce, like gang members, Bloods and Crips was coming together to celebrate his life. And uh, this stuff getting old, man, like gang banging to me is old. It looks like a dated situation. Like, is it other things that black people can unite and come together for except foolishness. For real, at the end of the day, like I grew up in a neighborhood that wasn't gang affiliated at first. And then as I got older, it got more and more and more gang affiliated. And I'm from the South. Like how, how is these streets and stuff that people claiming making it to the South? You niggas representing streets that you ain't never seen or never walked on or been on. Like, I don't understand gang banging or whatever, but tell me, like, what's the benefits to it? Because this man 
died trying to help out his community, trying to give back to the community by opening up stores and businesses and, you know what I mean, uh, giving people knowledge and information that they might not have been able to obtain if it wasn't for him. So I'm flabbergasted by what's going on in uh, Los Angeles with Nipsey Hussle and his murals or whatever. And we're going to check out something about Nipsey Hussle and his murals. You know what I mean? Uh, tour a little bit further in the podcast, but that's crazy to me, though, man. Like, they vandalizing Nipsey Hussle's murals, like painting blood and this and blood that on his murals or whatever. And it's it's just crazy. Didn't a crip kill Nipsey Hussle? The bloods didn't do it. So I don't know why they take in whatever, whatever it is. I don't understand it. I'm flabbergasted by it. But I just had to mention that uh, about Nipsey or whatever, because I'm a fan of Nipsey. And further along in this podcast, I'm going to do underrated, the five underrated artists of all time in hip hop. And I'm going to play a little bit of that video or whatever. And we're going to celebrate these underrated artists because I feel like the man that I uh, learned about Nipsey through is very underrated. He's a real talented artist and I rock with him the hard way, the long way. But let, me, let me not say the whole hard way because they can get straight into a pause moment with that. But I know y'all seen the thumbnail or whatever of the podcast and we're going to get straight on into it like we got to celebrate uh, Murray J. Blige for being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or whatever. She's like the queen of R&B. And uh, to me, Nipsey, I said Nipsey Hussle, Murray J. Blige is untouched, untouchable. The only person who could come close to Murray J. Blige in the R&B category probably would be Whitney or Mariah or somebody. But for the streets, for the hood, for the soul, the pain music and everything, Murray J. Blige is it. And I salute Murray J for uh, being inducted to the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But as soon as she celebrated, <laughs> somebody want to come out with some allegations, sexual allegations against Murray J. Blige. And if y'all remember this artist, his name is Danny Boy. He was an artist from Death Row Records back in the days. And uh, he spoke on her name or whatever and... and I didn't appreciate it, but if it's the truth, it's the truth. But let's get on into it and see what Danny Boy talking about, about Murray J. She's sitting on the couch and shit. I'm like, you know, you ain't got to worry about him. You know, it's you straight. You did it like I'm 15, 16 years old. And she laying on the couch. And I'm sitting on the other end and she lay down on the couch and put her head in my lap. Like, damn. He can't be talking about Mary was talking about she wanted me to come back up here and now she on my lap. And I'm sitting there and I'm wondering, I'm like, okay, what what is this gonna end up to? And she stayed a couple, she stayed a couple more hours. And uh we decided to go in the other room because it was a sweet. We went in another room and lay down. And she lay down with me and she kind of like backed up against me and every time she back up against me I would move away and shit you know and uh from that time I had an opportunity to go out to New York and visit her a couple more times but you know that's why I was kind of confused when I heard Kurt saying that Mary was pot girl uh because at that time she was my girl <laughs> at that time I'm 15 16 years old and she Cap. flying me in to see her and uh, you know what it is when a girl back up on you, you young and shit, and I'm trying to show her that she ain't phasing me. I'm hard as goddamn. <laughs> She's backing up against me. This Mary J. Blige. And uh, quite nice with the guy. I mean, you know, I don't even know if you're supposed to say you had, you supposed to say you had sex with people on camera? Anyway, whatever. I'm not quite sure, but. Relations. Yeah, we had relations. That's a good way. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to put it out. And, and I, I said it in the book when I was, you know. So this dude done wrote a book about his life behind death row. Danny Boy, you know what I'm saying? And uh, in his book, he was talking about Murray J. Blige 
she drug him at 15 years old. She was getting drugs for him, weed, cocaine, or whatever, and having sex with him and flying him out at 15 years old. Like, what's the point of him putting it out now? Like, damn, you and your mid to late forties, dog, and you putting it out now. And is this like something that you happy about or whatever? But who knows? Like, man, that's a strong allegation because is the statue of limitations up on on that, or is the statue of limitations ever up on a sexual situation? So, with that being said, like, is Danny Boy snitching? Is he snitching on Murray J and his incident with Murray J? And the man was giggling and kikiing and he he and like that's that's a, a trophy. That's something, a highlight of his life that he got the opportunity to sleep with Murray J. Blige. So he could be traumatized and not know that he was being raped or being abused. Because 15 years old, that's very young. But some men would be like, so what? I was having sex. I was I got me some. You know what I mean? That's how a lot of dudes is when it comes to beautiful women and women of power. But with that being said, man, Danny Boy, man, you lame in hell for that, dog. And Murray J, I salute everything that you're doing. But if these allegations are true, you need to come out and, like, say something about it, though. Say Just mention something about it to let your fans know and your people know that you ain't no creep at the end of the day because, golly, you got hit hits on hits and Every time that, like, an artist or entertainer's downfall, it be with some sexual stuff, and it's weird. But I got a new segment that I want to do on the podcast, and I'm going to do it every podcast, and it's called Stories from the Hood. From my hood. Stories from the Hood. A story. Something that I went through or I experienced in the hood. So my little light went out in the back, but it's cool, though. Stories from the hood, right? So this story from the hood, I'm going to mention something that I don't know. It's funny to me now that I'm older. And it was funny then. Let me stop capping. So you know how in every neighborhood, every hood around the world, you have uh, junkies. And you had a person that's always trying to borrow a dollar or trying to get you to purchase them a beer or give you a give them a wake up like every street hustler know what a wake up is that mean we're gonna get this money today but i need to wake up wake me up give me something to wake me up that's gonna get me going so this incident we're in the hood me and my homeboy we're on the back of the porch now we ain't on the back of the porch we're on the back of his car with the music playing we smoking the blunt or whatever and we just chilling and <laughs> This individual walked up on us and said, let me borrow five. Let me get something, something. But he do it two, three times a day. So by him doing it two, three times a day, we agitated at this moment. And we like, if you eat the blunt while it's on fire, we'll give, <laughs> we'll give you $20. This is just a crazy story from the hood. But if you eat the blunt, <laughs> we'll give you $20. So this man, we gave him the blunt. That was on fire. That was still lit, you know. And he put the blunt lit in his mouth and chewed it up while it was on fire. <laughs> Man, that's a hilarious story. I can see it. And just imagine that. A story from the hood. That's part one. Let's do it. Hey, so do y'all ever wonder, like, the information in the Google search engine, do y'all ever wonder where it come from? How is it done? Like, you can just put anything in the Google search engine and it'll pop up. Stanky feet. It, it might be a restaurant called that. It might be a store called that. Siri, you talk to her. She can take you anywhere in the world. Like, Google search engine. Like, what's your thought process on that right quick? Like, 
how do they have all this information stored? Like, why us as humans are so like engulfed in information? Then I know some humans that once they get out of high school, they don't want to learn no more. And that that's bad, dog, that you don't want to learn no more once you're out of high school or college or whatever your final thing is before you go into the work world. People don't want to learn no more, but why are we so gulfed in information, so intrigued about learning something new or doing something new? And uh, this was a commercial that just popped up on my YouTube. And I was looking at a podcast when it popped up on my YouTube. But when the commercial popped up, I was like, dang, this is a 50 minute long commercial. And I couldn't stop looking at it. And uh, when I was looking at it, this popped up. And I want y'all to uh, listen to this and look at this and tell me. And if you listen to the audio version of the podcast, come on over to YouTube, man. Subscribe to the channel and join the family, man. But this popped up on my YouTube commercial feed. So what does this actually mean? Here are a few takes. I think if we weigh up the various parts of the mission, to me, the most important piece is organizing. There are hundreds of billions of web pages that are out there. Our job is to filter through that and to really give you what you are looking for at that moment in time. And then the next part is the world's information. So information means really anything. You know, it started out for Google with web pages, but it's so much more than that. Whether it's physical books that we need to scan or maps that we build of every place on earth, that's information too, and it's not web pages. It's the kind of stuff that we organize today. And then I think that word universal is important because universal means for everyone. Whether someone that can't see, whether someone that can't hear, people that speak different languages, really making it accessible to as broad a set of people as possible. We might be goofy people who come to work in t-shirts and and desperately need haircuts and things like that. And we may not look super serious, but we know how much people rely on this. Yes. And we take that mission really, really seriously. So it sounds like the mission is pretty important to these folks. But here's another important question. So um, how would you explain a search work? Right. Mm. So y'all got to go look at that for yourselves. He was talking about how do you explain how search works? How does Google search works? How do they compile all that information into the internet? And uh, you can just, without coding, back in the days it was just coding to get to the information that we got at our fingertips now. And like, how did they compile all that information into the internet for us to have easy access to it? I could tell y'all how, but I would rather y'all watch the uh, rest of the video. And uh, mm, it's deep. That's just my opinion. So I got a couple of more topics before we get to the uh, underrated artists. And one of my topics is like Joe Budden, he kicked, his co-host off the show, right? And recently they came out with a commercial. And the commercial <clears throat> is doing more numbers than Joe Button show. And what really intrigued me is that they haven't done a show yet. And they got 112,000 subscribers off of a snippet. Now, and it could be all from the hype of Joe button kicking them off the podcast, but I know it's the Joe button podcast and I enjoy it still, but these people added an aspect to that podcast. That was interesting. That was good. That was intriguing and entertaining. And I think personally that they're going to be successful on their own. 112,000 subscribers is not nothing to play with, with just a commercial. For real. That's a lot of subscribers. And he got Kevin Durant's like company backing them. They got Kevin Durant company backing them. So they got a strong infrastructure and strong foundation backing them to the point to where it, I don't know if it'll fail, but 
right now because I can't predict the future, but they look like they're starting off strong and they look like they're starting off good. Whew. Man, I'm intrigued about this first episode to see what they're going to be saying. So I just had to get that out there because, you know, I always talk about me being a fan of podcasts and what made me create a podcast. And they are part of the reason why I created a podcast. So with that being said, we're going to look at a little bit of the uh, the commercial and see if y'all going to watch it. This is called The Job Hunt. And it's like Rory and Maul are hunting for jobs now since Joe Budden fired them. <laughs> and this is a pretty good skit to me. Can't believe I got fired after I quit. Now you know how it feels. So much for white privilege. Yeah. Does it mean we need to get a job? I don't know if we have to get jobs, but I think it'd be good to do something. I mean, I hit my grandpa to see if there's any construction gigs, but he said they built all the bridges already. Now that's funny because there's always traffic. It seems like they're always working on them. Insurance job. Nah. Uh, and you still got that dude that does the PPP scams? It's quiet for that. Everybody's getting locked up. I got a plug at Johnson & Johnson. We could sell fake Vax cards. Now that might be a thing. People still got to go to Tulum. That's true. You got a resume? I can make something up. Like on paper, not in Harlem. I can make something up. Okay. Just stain my jeans. You got a detergent? It's in the closet. <laughs> So, man, that's the guys hunting for new jobs or whatever, man. That's hilarious. They throwing so many shots at Joe that it's crazy, though. Talking about Joe uh, said that Ma used to hide the detergent in the closet or whatever where he couldn't get none, but he was living with him for free. So he <laughs> they throwing shots at Joe for saying that. And, man, that skit got them boys 112,000 subscribers, boy. They, they on a mission. So we're going to switch the topic up and – Talk about, are y'all interested in the new Fast and Furious? They just dropped the official trailer, and I'm interested. Fast 9. Like, people probably saying it's repetitive, but this is the only, like, movie that has this many, like, over and over and over again. And I bet it's going to do big numbers because the world is just opening up, and people ready to get to the movies. People ready to have fun. They're ready to get out. The traffic getting bad and everything. The mass policy off. People vaccinated and the, and the United States is wide open right now. So with that being said, are y'all going to watch Fast 9? Have y'all seen the trailer? If you haven't seen the trailer, we're going to show the trailer and get right to it because I'm interested. I'm probably going to go buy a ticket ASAP. So the trailer to me was a good trailer. And, and man, let's see who all in it because I don't watch this since Bow Wow was in it. Luda was in it. Ja Rule was in it. And all the characters, I don't watch every last one of them. So let's see what this Fast 9 trailer looking like. The world has a way of changing. <laughs> and we change too. I know some people, they would die for me. There are moments that separate us. But we always come back together. We heard y'all needed a little love out here. <laughs> Y'all ever thought about the wild missions we've been on? We've taken out planes, trains, tanks. I'm not going to even think about the submarine. And now we got cars flying in the air. Who is he? Jacob is Dom's brother. It's a long time, Dom. Little brother. You always say never turn your back on family. But you turned your back on me. Now your little family is my world. Oh, I got I got to quit playing this before they give me a strike. 
you know YouTube good for giving strikes and 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 cutting like people visuals out of they they shows or whatever. So I'm gonna take that out before YouTube give me a strike. But dang, that's crazy. John Cena is a uh, down brother, Vin Diesel brother, and they beefing or whatever and fighting, man. So uh, go get your tickets, get your popcorn ready, uh, sneak your uh, candy and your alcohol, your yak in your purse, have your girl put your Hennessy bottle in her purse so you can get a little tipsy while you're watching the, uh, <laughs> watching the movie or whatever. But Fast 9, I'm ready to go see that, man. And, and the YouTube thumbnail, I know y'all seen, like, Anthony Davis, why he's always injured. They call him uh, <laughs> Anthony Disability, AD, uh, Anthony Disabled uh, in uh, the social media world. They're blowing on him because he's always injured. And um, Anthony Davis is a good player. I don't think that LeBron them going to make it past this, this round without AD. Brian ain't young no more. He can't will his team by himself to – to win a, a round, let alone the championship no more. I don't think so, but we about to see. And AD, he has a groin injury, and they listen him day to day. And uh, whew, AD, what the Lakers need to do, trade him, get rid of him, because, like, Brian don't got that many years left for him to be depending on somebody that's always injured. I, I can't think of a year where AD played a complete year at all and ad he's a solid player like he a top 10 player in the league but if you can't stay in uh stay healthy to get on to the ship then you useless because you playing with iron man brian he's he's considered iron man brian don't get hurt like that and when he do get hurt he'll be back i think brian was just resting to be honest the why the reason why he wasn't playing that, that much this year but AD, man, Whew. Brian, in his 18th year, you got to get right. You got to get right. You you hurt. You play two, three games, you hurt. I haven't seen you play two back-to-back -back games, strong games, in a while since the finals. Two back-to-back -back strong games. But I'm going to get up off here, man. I'm going to promote my album first before we get into the underrated artists. So y'all go check this out ASAP, man. Go run them streams up. The Great. That's the title of the album, The Great. So as I was telling y'all, this artist introduced me to Nipsey Hussle and uh, I was a fan of his music before Nipsey Hussle because I think it's a title, an album title, Get Home Safe. And he's a West Coast artist and that Get Home Safe album is like his strongest album, my opinion. And to me, it's probably a West Coast classic. I ain't going to say it's a nationwide classic, but it's a West Coast classic. And this artist, his name is Dom Kennedy. And we're going to get on into the record bootleg cable. Let's go. Got you. Yeah. Chilling at the house watching bootleg cable. Got you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Chilling at the house, watching I, I bought the first Puerto Rican here and put her in the club. But niggas, they don't want to give me props. They like scrubs. More money playing on TV and nigga bust. If I say I love you, baby, then it's the drugs. It's not a chick that's controlling me. I got a naked laying on the phone with me. Texting me while she listening to Joe to see. When I'm out, it's hard not to notice me. I got my Yankee hat wearing all black. Camo rag round my neck, it's a cold fact. Reagan sold drugs in my phone tap. Other people's money can't get on that. So fuck you A&Rs and you sneak disses. This one for my niggas, gotta keep a pistol. I'm the one grinding with you, yeah. And profiling still an issue. 
My Monte Carlo got current tax. If I'm off Vernon Ave, I'm close to the pack. I'm good with the weed, I don't need wax. I like them kind of thick, little baby fat. Skinny girls, freaky, yeah, I knew a couple. Late night maneuvers, staying out of trouble. Just a pinky ring on the day I'm subtle. Bootleg cable watching, I was younger. I like the big popper video, that shit was jumping. I need to smoke with Lil C's, wanna tell him something. I was sad when Biggie died, LA niggas loved him. Don't believe the hype, we shall overcome this. Yeah. At the end of the day, if you want to enjoy some good West Coast music, he's so underrated, it's ridiculous. And to be honest, I think he had the best verse on Nipsey Hussle album Victory Lab. Go back and check that song out uh, with him and Belly. I think it's Belly on the hook, the Nipsey Hussle of. Uh, album it's on i don't know the title of the song so i keep saying a nipsey hustle album but this next artist up he's one of my favorite he released a mixtape in 2014 called jefe and the uh hit single off of that album was called awesome it was a dope record and he done made plenty of records since then he got uh he got a song with gold link too that's a hit record and uh, he just ain't getting the, the proper due, my opinion, for his music. He ain't getting the proper due. And this artist is from D.C., Shy Glizzy. Let's get on into it. Mm -hmm. It's believed. Yeah. Young Hefe, Holmes. Oh. Standing on the block on my head. My wish was to get rich. I got big homies, but they did. I got long money, stack that bread. Bitch, we run the town for what I see. I take it down, paint it red. Bad bitches on, they give me hate. Free my rich niggas out the face. When he get lonely, he wanna have a good night. She say, shawty. With that bad look like she like the party But he gon' get her mind right Got all my cardies I'm tryna duck the limelight Ever since I was a youngin' I seen you pussy niggas hatin' I'm putting on my youngest And I'm be proud to see him make A nigga ain't give me shit Nah, nah, y'all gon' see me take it When I ripped out that stick Man, you should've seen they face I feel so bad, dawg you said see her ass, dog. Her back cost fifteen thousand. Come on and check the tags, dog. Running from mad dog. Told my nigga don't get bad, dog. Just blew a quarter mil. Yeah, that's what that new G wag calls. Need me a bitch gon' ride with me. Need a bitch gon' vibe with me. Now them niggas ain't none of my friends. They ain't gon' side with me. How the fuck you call yourself a glizzy? Niggas ain't in tie with me. Bitch, I seen your DM, I'm busy. Don't you wanna go live with me? Dime piece of tame. Side piece of miss. And she got the dick she say I see now. Why you be so crazy? She told me I'm number one. Play me my green. Okay, okay, okay. That's Shy Glizzy. Hefe. Like Hefe, he he got real deal street music. You know what I'm saying? His music is phenomenal to me. He authentic. You can tell that he getting money for real. He ain't signed to no label. He authentic, authentic street music. And I, I appreciate when the music is authentic and the, the artist is pure. And uh, he just ain't getting his due. And like I know D.C. is known for go-go music, but D.C. is known for being a real street city, like real street. And it's, it's talented artists in D.C., but you don't see no D.C. artists pop like and we got another artist from D.C. on this list also that's underrated. And this is my personal underrated artist of all time. And this artist right here is from Mississippi. Y'all know who it is. He came out with Cole. He came out around the time Drake came out, Kendrick came out. And my opinion, he making just as much high quality music as them. For real, real spill. And we're going to get on into it. Big Crit. Hey, man. Crit. 
what can I say? I can't say enough. Like his music is is crazy. He's done a lot of production for Bun B. He produced for himself. And when he produced for himself, he make dope records. He know how to play the guitar. He know how to play the drums. He, his music, he has live instrumentation in his, in his music. He remind me of a young Pimp C. I think that could be part of what's hindering him, the sound like the Pimp C sound and the self-proclaimed king of the South talk that he's having with, within himself. So Big Crit is a dope artist to me. And, man, he's highly underrated. Highly underrated. He's supposed to have multiple platinum plaques right now. For real. Grammy nominations and all type of stuff. Crit got good good music. So this next artist up, like, he had incidents with Tax Stone, Casanova, beef with Joe Budden. He came out with the T-shirts uh, calling Joe Budden Junkie Joe. And uh, he the sound of New York. He the last person yeah. making the authentic sound of New York. And he is not appreciated in New York for the top type of quality records that he's making. And this artist, man, is Troy Alve. And we're going to get right on into it. We ain't even playing with that. God is great and my people straight. The very late by the faith gon' hang. God is great and my people straight. The very late by the faith gon' hang. Thank you, Jesus. Give me this God. Thank you, Jesus, for everything I've done. I got it, got it, got it. Wake up in the morning every day and I pray. Lord, keep the sucking niggas out of my way. Seems like they always got something to say. Using their opinions in a negative way. I want help with the pain, but their voices remain silent. I'm thinking of ways every day to stop violence. Brothers quick to argue, pull a weapon off the dresser. Police doing worse, we don't put weapons on the presses. Doing all these drugs, got our brains in the fog. Can't escape reality, we scared, get a dog. Make sure the bark bigger than the bite. They don't respect it when you humble, so fuck being polite. I used to be knocking out, I entered through a door, I'm kicking, I want it all. People with nothing to say that I'm tripping, fuck them all. They comfortable with sad conditions, I want. Lavish living, I'm down to make a brash decision And I'm ready for whatever consequence I mean what I say and I say what I mean And I'm ready for whatever consequence I mean what I say and I say what I mean God bless Hey, I probably didn't do Troy out no justice by playing that record <laughs> But that was his most recent video before we did this podcast and Troy Alve, he's a dope artist, man. Go check him out. God is uh, great and my paper straight. That's the name of the record. So uh, this last artist is my favorite artist off of this list. And he has had his highs and lows. And he has complained about his highs and lows. And to me, he came out around 2010. It was a, a rush of artists around 2010. You had your Big Shines, your Kendricks, your Coles, your Drake. You had a lot of artists that's running the game right now came out in 2010. And this artist is one of them. And he he hit the charts hard with Lotus Flower Bomb. Lotus Flower Bomb was a record that was out of control doing numbers. But since then, the quality of his music, it, it hasn't lacked anything. But the sales and all of that, is low, man. Like Wale, good vibes. Let's go. But there is always light if only we're brave enough to see it. If only we're brave enough to be it. Losing my cool, I'm losing my patience. You using your stimulus just to lose it in Vegas. I see a lot of APs, I see a lot of Rolexes. I'ma buy them half of these niggas right after the pandemic. 
I can show you a style. I can show you a rapper. After all this shit that happened, though, we gotta be brothers. Cal Williams said we good, then we better than that. But we get shot and nothing happens. How we set up for that? You see, my culture expensive. That's why they paying it to us. It be you, Terry Crews, niggas tap dancing for that. I never let nobody less to treat me lesser than them. You can't have no Mr. Childs eating Panda Express. I'm burning stage in the studio before I let niggas near. I leave my weapon by the speaker so they hearing me clear. I mean, the money be cool. I did amazing this year. I mean, I'm famous, but I'm drained. I need some prayer for real. I'm so tired. Yeah. All I need is good vibe. Shit ain't right on this side. Yeah. All my niggas lying and the president be lying. I got Zop in this raw. Wanna fly? Put this outside in the sky. Shit ain't right on this side. Yeah. All my niggas lying and the president be lying. I got Zop in this raw. Wanna fly? Yeah. You know, slick as Elgato. Don't worry about the kicks. Nah, hey, man. Elgato. Yo, 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 yo. I appreciate everybody that tuned in, everybody that has donated to the podcast, everybody that is called into a live show. I appreciate everybody that just give a view. Leave a comment in the comment section. I hope y'all enjoy Stories from the Hood, the new segment to the podcast, Stories from the Hood. And on the next episode, I'm going to have another story. But I appreciate y'all. Peace, love, plenty of abundance. Go and get you some money. Got it bumping. Hey.